Hey YouTube, Zuki one here. Uh, it's been a long time since I've done a video. I got to see if I can remember how to do one of these. Uh, essentially, I was cruising around the internet the other day, looking at some pictures of some bearded axes, and you know, just kind of checking some stuff out, and I ran across a new product from Cold Steel. Now, this here is the Cold Steel Viking hand axe, and I went ahead and picked this up. It was uh, 30, 35 bucks off of Amazon, pretty cheap. Yeah, it kind of looks like it might be a little fun to play around with. So, went ahead and ordered one, got it in the mail, and I got it thinking that, uh, you know, this would be a good time for me to, to do a video on something that's been requested of me quite a few times, and that is basically generally taking care of a tomahawk, how to fix it, how to set it up for use, how to sharpen. Uh, I, I get questions like that quite a bit. And I always kind of felt like I left that portion out when I was doing all the uh, the Cold Steel reviews that I did. So uh, I'm going to break this down into a three-part series, and I'm going to try and kind of document my uh, getting this thing ready for, for field testing. And uh, I want to document that and make videos of it as I go. So anyways, uh, the first video, I'm going to talk about head fitment. And this video is basically for people that are having trouble with their hawk head falling off the handle. I've seen a lot of negative reviews and a lot of comments. Um, people talking about that, you know, the head just doesn't stay on the handle. Two or three swings and the head fell off. Uh, I tightened the screw down as far as I could, and you know, the handle still comes loose. And you know, comments like that. And basically, this video is for you guys. This video is for people that maybe aren't familiar with a friction fit style uh, implement. So it's really hard to describe in the comments. I've tried to describe it in the past to people. And sometimes I, you know, I just I have a, had a really hard time trying to write it down, you know, without having some sort of picture. So here you go. This is a picture. It's going to be a video. Uh, it's even better. So first thing, let's let's get this out of the way. Let's look at a typical axe. See how axe is put together. Most people are familiar with axes. Okay, here's a good example here. Okay, basically, the head is permanently affixed to the handle, and how that's achieved, typically, is this is the axe handle here, piece of hickory, and there's a there's a good close up there for you. And essentially, what this is is this this tapers out at the base in both profiles, and you set the axe head on there, and then the taper at the base will capture the head and hold it in place, keep it from slipping down. And then you take a wedge of wood and you drive that into the slot that's cut, and that will force these two pieces of wood out and that will keep the head from coming out coming loose at the top essentially how it's done here you see the wood wedge there that's driving these two outer pieces against the inner portion of the axe and then there's a steel wedge there locking everything into place and it's always nice to see a little bit of the axe handle protruding from the top of the head. Personally, I like that because it flares out a little bit, and I think it just stays tighter a little bit longer. So that's basically how an axe works. Now, forget all that because that's not how a tomahawk works. Basically, on a tomahawk, you have the opposite of that. This is just a short little handle I made for, for carving and little projects in the shop. And essentially, what it is, is it's the reverse. Okay, it's the reverse of the axe head. The head slides from the bottom to the top of the handle. The handle is tapered wider at the top, narrower at the bottom, and the head is actually tapered. The eye hole is actually tapered to match the handle. So as you slide it up, it locks into place. One or two taps with a mallet, run it upside down, tap it on a stump. That's how you lock it into place. That's how it should work. And I even wrote up some uh, PDF files. Some pretty damn fancy files here, if I don't say so myself. Essentially, this is what you're looking for. Tapered handle, tapered head, nice smooth fit. Unfortunately, this is what most people get when they order a tomahawk off the internet. Okay? This isn't really an exaggeration with some of the ones I've seen. But you can see that the handle generally is not tapered, and then you have this lip up here. And then, for some reason, 
there's a screw involved. When you mix screws with hammers and axes, bad things happen. Um, the only time you should use a screw is when the five nails don't hold it in place. Okay, th this isn't mine. This is a this is a customer's. Yeah, that's rehandling it for a customer. So, anyways, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about with this newly acquired axe. The first thing you do, back this screw out and throw it away. Far away. There's there's what we're going there's what we're going up against. Okay. This is what most people run into. And it's it's loose. I mean it's not going to stay tight. Okay? There's no taper there. Alright? So again, what we're looking for is a nice smooth transition. And here I'll show you this real quick. Okay. You see how far up that fits? Now, if I take this head and I turn it upside down, see, that's as far up as it's going to go. That's just a little visual there to help some people maybe understand what we're talking about by a tapered hole. Tapered head has to fit tapered handle. So, how are we going to fix that? It's really easy. Basically, all you need is some sandpaper or a file, aggressive file, or a rasp. If you don't have any of those, you can actually do it with just a pocket knife. Okay? We have talked about how the fit is determined by how well the handle taper matches the head taper. And before we start working on the handle, we need to take care of the head. Real quick, really easy to do. You can use a round file use a piece of sandpaper, whatever you have, and basically you want to take any burrs or sharp edges off of the top and bottom of the inside of the head. Basically, you want it to be able to slide up and down the handle real easy. Not like that. I got the handle in backwards. That way when you take the time to taper this real nice, you don't have a sharp edge on here uh, going against all the work you just did. Alright? So, real simple. Also, safety first. This blade is really dull, so it's not that big of an issue. In fact, it's 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 extremely dull. But uh, if you have any kind of edge, just cover it, put a sheath on it if you got a sheath. If you don't, uh, find something suitable. I use a couple layers of duct tape. Works real well. And essentially, You're just gonna work the edge of this down until you don't feel any catch. No burrs, no catch, and there's a slight taper on there. Alright, so when you get that done, then we'll start working on the handle. Alright, so once you get your head cleaned up, feels pretty good, no sharp edges, no burrs. Like I said, you're not trying to take a lot of material off. You don't want to mess with the taper. You don't you don't need to be doing anything other than just cleaning it up and smoothing it out a little bit. Once you get that done, then we'll move on to the handle. And basically, just like the picture, we want to uh, smooth this out make it a nice smooth taper. The easiest way to do this is with power tools, if you have them. Be very careful. If you take too much off, um, you, you see there is a taper there. If you take too much off, you're going to waste this handle. Um, if you don't have power tools, it's no big deal. It's really not that big of a deal. You can use rasp or some aggressive sandpaper. And essentially, I'm just trying to take this, this, this heavy ledge off. Use a rasp. You can use a knife. Basically just kind of trim, trim and taper. And don't take too much off. That's why we fix the head first. Take a little bit off. Once you get most of this ridge down, try fitting the head on here. See how it fits. All right. 
So I'm going to get most of the heavy work done here, and I'll be back, and we'll start test fitting it to the head. And here's a handy little trick I use. Just wrap a piece of aggressive sandpaper around an old handle, broom, broom handle, whatever, and just sand it down. And we're getting really close. This one was actually in pretty bad shape. That that was a pretty pretty hefty little ledge up there. So this is taking quite a bit. The important thing though, don't overdo it. Or you'll have a really nice walking stick and a really nice tomahawk head. So, do a little bit. Take your head, test fit, and then kind of look at it. You can see the ledge is gone, and it's starting to feel a little better, but what I'm checking for is wiggle. And I still got a little bit of wiggle. And what it is, is the bottom part is not tight enough. So you need to remove a little bit more at the top to let this slide up. But when you're removing material at the top, make sure you're not taking any material off down here because you need this to slide up to where it's thick enough to contact the bottom of the head which it's not doing right now it's just a little loose so basically I want to let this go up about another eighth of an inch I'm going to trim this down to where this goes up about another oh, maybe eighth and then we'll see how it fits then All right, see you in a minute Basically, I'm trying to take more up here than down here. Not trying, trying to not push down in here. I'm trying to push up in here. Just to smooth out this transition. But remember, we can't thin this out. Because the head, the bottom of the head, has to fit tight down here too. Or it's going to rock. And then it won't stay tight. And what I like to do when I start to feel like I'm getting close, just give it a couple taps. See how it feels. Oh, that's that's good and solid there. So now what you can do, you just tapped it on. Just tap it off and look at how your fit looks as far as hopefully that's coming out. It looks a little bright on the camera. I'm looking at this ring and just making sure that it's not digging a big groove in. If it's digging a big groove in right away then you know it's going to come loose right away because it's not going to allow this to slowly work its way up as you use it and keep itself tight. If it's digging a groove in right away you need to put a little more taper into it. That way as you use it, instead of cutting an, another groove in here, it's going to slowly wedge itself up tighter and tighter. That's the theory anyways. Alright, it sounds complicated, but once you get the hang of it, it goes really easy. Alright, so I'm going to fit this a little more. We'll see how it turns out. Alright, let's check the fitment again. Like I said, you want to do a little bit at a time. Can always sand a little bit more off. Can't exactly put more material on though. A couple of good taps. Oh, that feels solid. And now we're getting to the point where you want to start checking the bottom. Now, unfortunately, the way these are made, very seldom do I run across a handle that actually fills out the full profile of the head. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. But inside there you can see a little bit of a gap. There's not much you can do about that. It's just the way it is. Some handles fit better than others. Sometimes they take off too much material on the sides and it just it just doesn't fill out the head. On the on the po positive side, 
I've never really had that too much of an issue as long as it's a good solid lockup and there's a good portion of contact there. Now this being a 30 inch handle that's probably going to come into play when I'm field testing that but for right now basically just keep in mind you want to get as close a fit as possible. If it doesn't turn out good enough there's always the option of making your own handle later on or ordering another handle. But for the most part that's not a big issue. I like to check it and get as close as possible and if I feel like I need a little more contact down there at the bottom I'll just taper a little more of the top of the head and let let or a little more of the top of the handle and let the head move up a little bit. Okay? For right now I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to worry about it too much. All right. Hopefully this video showed you guys how to properly seat the head to your handle on your friction fit tools. It's not that tough and once you do a good job of setting it initially any uh, field tightening that may be required should go really easily and that's something we should talk about here real quick that the having a removable head has its benefits but there's also some downsides. The main downside is that periodically you're going to have to adjust the fit differences in, in moisture content of the wood, in the air, the amount of use that you that you put the tool through, those things, the density of the wood, those things can all uh, have a factor in how often you have to readjust the fit between the head and the handle. The good, the good news is once you do it right the first time, generally if it does require a little bit of a adjustment, which it generally happens, I mean it does, it does happen, uh, but once you get a good fit initially, it's really easy to just touch it up and get a good tight fit again. Uh, the benefits to me definitely outweigh the disadvantages. The, the, the biggest benefit is being able to pull the head off within an instant and switch from you know, a 30 inch handle to a you know, 16 inch handle. It's really nice to be able to do that. It just To me, it makes the tool more versatile. And if you want to put some, you know, have a real fancy go to town handle, well, you can do that too. If it doesn't sound appealing to you, and you just don't want to mess with the head coming loose, and you don't want to mess with setting it up, that's perfectly fine too. You know, my suggestion is get a regular axe. You don't have to worry about it. If you break the handle, you can reset it. Once you set it, it's permanently affixed. You don't have to mess with it. So, Alright, guys. Hopefully that helps you guys out and that's video one this is going to be a think a, I think it's going to be a three-part series the next section that I'm going to talk about is the one that I probably get the most questions about and that is how do I sharpen my tomahawks so hopefully I'll have that one out relatively soon after I release this one until then stay safe practice your skills uh, leave a comment leave a question try and answer those back when I can constructive criticism is always welcome that's how we learn until next time See you guys.